This year has officially been Canada's worst fire season on record. More than 10 million hectares have burned so far, and First Nations are urgently calling for increased support for communities and individuals impacted by the fires. In B.C., there are currently almost 370 active wildfires, with some First Nations communities being especially hard hit in the interior of B.C. In the Northwest Territories, there are 239 active wildfires burning, impacting First Nations near Yellowknife and more than half of the Indigenous people in the territory. Joining me, Assembly of First Nations Regional Chief for Northwest Territories, Gerald Antoine, and Assembly of First Nations Regional Chief for BC, Terry TG. Thank you both so much for your time today. Uh, Chief TG, I want to start with you. Give us a sense of how the fires have affected First Nations communities in BC. Well, as the current state, uh, there are approximately 21 First Nations communities that are on order or alert uh, in regards to the many fires across British Columbia. And right now, there has been some First Nations communities in the Shushawp area and also in the Okanagan area that have been adversely affected by these fires. Uh, the loss of homes, the loss of uh, administration, such as a band office, has been lost. Um, and certainly many, many First Nations community members have been evacuated or in some sort of evacuation or evacuation alert. So certainly, uh, similar to, to many uh, First Nations across this country, they are uh, uh, really uh, devastated by the effects of uh, many of these fires across this country. And Chief Antoine, what's the situation in the Northwest Territories? The situation here is uh, very devastating. It's a very uh, difficult moment for the families that have been uprooted, displaced, and also uh, relocated. Uh, there are 12 communities that have been given the evacuation order. And it, uh, in regards to Dene uh, that are impacted, it is 65% uh, of the population here in Dene Day, NWT. And we have a lot of cha uh, challenges in front of us. Uh, they also have endured uh, challenges of communication. And communication is really key at this uh, point. Also, uh, the family members, uh, as I, men I mentioned, is that they've been impacted. They don't know what the plan is uh, going home. They need, and there's also a, a need to the officials that are working in, the, in this uh, capacity. They also need to acknowledge the official protocol that they need to work with the uh, DENA leadership. Uh, there needs to be clear roles and responsibilities. We just want to make sure that uh, our our family, community families are safe and protected during the, uh, this emergency. The other thing is that I've reached out to Red Cross. There's five of them in the community of Fort Simpson. There's also a contact in Edmonton. I encourage them to also have contact in all the locations that our families are in. Uh, they're scattered on the western part of uh, Canada. And so it's really important that we connect so that way they could be able to uh, be safe and protected. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we need to make sure that uh, we, uh, we uh, coordinate ourselves. We also need to uh, really reach out so that way we have uh, clear uh, collaboration among the, all the different agencies and all the different people that are also involved in the initiatives and also the efforts here to be able to assist the families. And so we need to make sure that the families are safe and protected. And so this is some of the challenges that are going on and we, we're going to continue advocating for the safety and also the protection of the families. Uh, Chief TG, in, in a similar vein, the AFN released a statement earlier this week calling for, quote, enhanced and immediate resources for prevention, mitigation, evacuation and recovery, also saying no First Nation should face or navigate this crisis alone. They urged all levels of government and individuals to provide support to First Nations. Uh, what is it that you communities in B.C. most need right now? Well, right now, I think there's a, a need for uh all of the above, I, I think, uh, in terms of resources to uh, First Nations communities to uh, recover, because uh, some of the First Nations have lost homes and uh, administration buildings. Uh, really, I think, you know, there's uh, some First Nations communities that have uh, been on evacuation for, for quite some time. Uh, far too often, uh, whether it's a provincial or federal government, there's a real bureaucratic nightmare in terms of 
uh, First Nations communities accessing the, the right resources. But I think overall, what we do need over the next uh, several years is the um, the ability to prepare for, for these disasters, the ability to plan for these disasters, because over the last 20 years, these fires, these events, uh, uh, much of uh, British Columbia are in drought level four and five, which is uh, really uh, making the situation worse. It's uh, created uh, the perfect uh, situation for many of these fires, and, and henceforth, we've seen uh, this year a record-breaking year on fires, not only in British Columbia, but in Canada. And I think it uh, really speaks to how ill-prepared we were, uh, all uh, levels of government were, were for this uh, fire season. So I think uh, there needs to be more investment. Uh, there needs to be more planning because every dollar we spend in planning and preparing for these disasters, the more uh, money we save in the future, and uh, the better off our, our communities can deal with uh, many of these issues uh, that in, in many respects is, is a result of climate change. Chief Antoine, Chief TG makes some important points about the, the path forward. I wonder, though, in terms of the help that is needed right now, we know the Indigenous Services Minister, Patty Haidu, said earlier this week that she personally commits to ensuring that there is support for all First Nations affected. What more um, could the federal government or, or uh, local government be doing to help? Yeah, the uh, path forward for me, the way that I sit and, and also uh, listening to what the elders had uh, also advocated before, and also the way that things have been going on currently, is that the Denai people need to be acknowledged. Uh, they're human beings. Uh, you also have to acknowledge that uh, the families, uh, this is their home, and that uh, they need to be the ones taking the lead. And we also need to make sure that they're involved, that they, they are the ones that uh, give us directions. And so our task here is so that we could take a look at the current, current support. Uh, this is the uh, tools and the resources that uh, are there. Uh, there is a lot of shortfall there. So we make sure that we uh, really look at how we could be able to address these things. The assistance is basically the capacity. We don't necessarily have all the capacities. However, if we look at it in terms of family, is that you, you need to make sure that they're involved, that they, they give direction, and we need to really work together collaboratively to be able to realign those support and assistance so that way it uh, really meets the objective of the family in meeting the needs of the family. And I think this is the way we need to be able to move forward. And this is what the Hawaiians are also saying, and I think this is what our people have been saying to date. And with this emergency going on, it's really important that we all work together, help each other to make this a possibility, and also looking at how we can be able to help each other work together moving forward. Okay, just we only have a moment left, but Chief TG, I would just like to ask you, in terms of what is being affected by these fires, we know that First Nations in BC have lost um, some sacred places, including burial grounds and archaeological sites. Can you just try to express to me what the significance is of that loss? Well, I think it's uh, the loss of our history of, of some of these uh, sacred sites and also some of these spiritual sites. And uh, I, I think it really speaks to um, how First Nations are seen in this um, province and in this country. And I think uh, if we have a world view or, or a real view of uh, the Indigenous uh, and, and the First Nations uh, worldview of, of, of the land, that we're not separated from the land, that we're all part of, of uh, you know, the environment. And um, I think it, it, the better off we, we will be. And I think uh, that's really lost upon much of the world and that, that connection with the lands and, 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 you know, those sacred sites, those spiritual sites, those sites we depend on for sustenance is our direct uh, connection to to our lands in our language and in, in the Dakin language we we say we are yinka dene we are people of the land we are people of the earth we come from the earth we'll go back to there so it shows that direct connection and and that's really been lost and and the more understanding that we have our connections with our environment i think the better off we are to to deal with uh, some of these issues that are affecting everybody in this world really appreciate uh, the insights and the time from 
for both of you today at this difficult moment. Thank you both so much, Chief Gerald Antoine and Chief Terry Tiji. Thank you. Uh, merci.